Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I am going to show you what is inside my kit bag. Um, so at the moment this is specifically kitted out of equine photography. Um, obviously with different things it changes between the lens and whether you're filming or photographying. So today this is set up specifically for equine photography. So let's show you inside. So the camera backpack I have is a Manfrotto Pro Light Red B210. I have tried many a backpack. Uh, throughout university, we actually used to do like exhibition days out. So we would be wearing the bags for often five, six hours at a time. Um, so I really needed something comfortable. However, with photography nowadays, I don't actually tend to wear it that often. It's more a case of just keeping it safe, secure and kept neatly as well because I don't have much room in this house so everything needs to be neat and tidy and I know exactly where everything is in this bag. So, features I love about it is that off the start you can't, like, you can't really get into it on the front. It's quite a secure bag. It has loops at the bottom for if you want to take a tripod out. I never take a tripod with me on my equine shoots. Um, on the side here it has clips and you can undo these parts. Um, that's just for easy access into the side of the bags, but again, I don't use them ever. Really lovely padded straps with two straps across, so one across the chest, which is actually adjustable. But again, I never really use that anymore, unfortunately. Um, I do, however, like the carrying handles on the side. They're really, really tough. Um, and on the back, another lovely feature, is that you can put your yeah, you can hook that onto a lap on a suitcase when you travel really like that the back is lovely and padded i would highly recommend this and i never really feel any strain when i wear this so obviously off the back here you do this so it undoes like that and then you can open up and this is what it looks like inside so it's got a mesh here to keep all your kit in, and I love this feature. It means that if you're, it's doubly secure, so you don't have to worry about undoing this and then any kit falling out. Um, and also it's so fine the mesh that it protects against any leaves, sand, dirt, uh, that sort of stuff. So on the back panel, there is a lovely big slot. You can keep your laptop in here. I keep in here this is the strap for my 70 to 200 lens bag. I keep a teeny tiny reflector in here. I don't really know how much good this would do on a shoot, but I keep it there. Uh, I also have a spare lens cap, just in case mine goes missing. And then it has these really handy tiny pockets. In mine, I keep a spare memory card, two AAA batteries, which are useful for remote triggers. I keep a couple of things of Pepto-Bismol, just in case you have stomach ache on a shoot and in this one here I also have just two antihistamines of which I've used one because I get really bad sneezes. Uh, so in here I have a random unicorn headphone splitter. I feel like I've had this forever, I don't think I've ever used it but I know the day I need it I'll be so thankful I have it. I have, this is the plate for the spider holder attacher. That's not what it's called. The waist belt by spider. And it attaches onto here, basically. This goes around your waist and then your camera sits in here and is locked in there and is pretty damn safe. I will use this on long shoot days where it's like three or four hours plus because carrying a lens with a 70 to 100 on is tough work. And this sits really lovely on my hips with this on it. I really, really, really rate this system. So that is one thing, I'll put that down there for now. I have a little battery charger for both batteries. I always keep a coin in my bag because when you are putting on tripod plates on the bottom of the camera, tighten them up with one of these, otherwise you will have a loose camera. Uh, I have a spare viewfinder cup thing because my one on my Sony literally broke within maybe two weeks of using it and it flapped about for ages and it did my head in. So I've got a spare one. The other one is now on the camera. 
an Allen key because the Spider holster system works on an Allen key and plus you never know when you need one. And then what are these last little bits I've got in here? I've got two fluffies for microphones to stop wind noise and I also have the battery door for the bottom of my camera. At the moment it currently has the battery grip on it so I keep this safe in here. So I've just put all of that away. Uh, moving on to the main body of the bag. I will just get it all out and we can talk through it bit by bit. So this is how I set the bag up inside. I have a big section for the 70 to 200 to live in. The camera lives in here and then my two lenses live here. And I've got a nice bit of space there for anything else I might need on the shoot. So I'll just put this down. Okay, so let's start biggest to last, biggest to smallest. So in here we have the Sony 70 to 200 f 2.8 GM lens. And this is basically Sony's highest quality range of highest quality lenses is their GM range. And you may or may not have noticed that as the mirrorless cameras are coming out, a selection of new lenses are coming out. And this is because the qualities of the cameras are so good now that they need suitable glass to keep up the quality. And the previous lenses aren't of superior enough quality. So these are their brand spanking new, beautiful lenses. And I have to say that they are beautiful. They are super duper sharp. They, the focus is so quick on them and they're much lighter, I've found, than previous models. Uh, the 7200 in terms of equine photography is just the workhorse. There's not really anything else to say about it. It is fantastic in the fact that it is super flattering portrait lens the whole way through. So anything from 70mm onwards is just super flattering. There's no distortion within portraits. Particularly working with horses is perfect because you can get a range of range of images without actually having to move. So horses can walk up and down and you can zoom in and out to create your different types of images. As I mentioned, the, suit, the focusing is super duper quick, especially if you have it on back button, which is something I've been using recently and I love. I don't think I'll be going back to focusing with the half pressing the shutter now. It's just, a fabulous moss lens. The ability to have f2.8 from 70mm all the way up to 200mm is just wonderful. Like you can shoot 200mm on f2.8 and have the background super duper duper blurred and it just gives that really professional feel. So you will not see me giving up my 70 to 200 anytime soon. So Next up is actual is my actual camera. So I shoot with a Sony A7 Mark III and I switched from a Nikon D750 about two years ago now and I love it. I initially thought, or oh, I don't know whether it's gonna be that much better, is the money worth it? Like in terms of megapixels, they were exactly the same, but I can hand on heart say I love this camera and it was literally the best thing I did was switching. The main reasons that I love it is because of the electronic viewfinder. If you haven't heard of the electronic viewfinder before, it basically means that when you hold the camera up to your eye and you go to take a picture, what, you, what the viewfinder shows you is exactly what the picture will take. So the normal viewfinders you'll have on DSLRs are actually a mirrored image of exactly what the lens is seeing and you would then choose your, choose your settings via the meter along the bottom, whereas in an electronic viewfinder, this is basically showing you how the picture will turn out. So if you're super duper duper overexposed and it's, the whole screen is white, that is what your picture will show you. So before, when you'd have to use a DSLR, you'd have to sort of say, one second, let me just take a picture, do a test shot, and then you'd sort of have to do that chimp when you, when you look down and you have to readjust your settings, take another picture, make sure it's right. You cut all of that out and you just have what you see is what you get. So now, I don't even read my meter anymore, which is probably super lazy, but there's no need to do it because what you see is what you get. I've said that phrase about 15 times, but it just means that if I want to shoot an, like an underexposed picture on purpose, 
I will just dial it in until I see what I'm happy with and then I'll press the shutter. So that is one number one thing that I love about this camera. So the second thing that I really love about this camera is a silent shutter. So on a lot of the DSLRs you'll see, you'll see a Q mode perhaps or a QC and that basically just means quiet. And the, sh the shutters, although they're quiet, I mean, I have had many camera shutters in my time and even when they're on quiet mode, they're still so obvious, it's painful. It's one of the things I hated about cameras for so long. Something like um, the Canon 1D or something like that, they are so loud and I really, did, I don't like them. So when I got this on silent shutter, I was thrilled because it is silent. You do not hear a thing. So when you're trying to take candid pictures of couples or you've got a horse that's maybe slightly anxious and a bit spooked by the sound of the shutter, pop silent shutter on and they are unaware completely of what's going on. Saying that in the same breath, I'll also sometimes purposefully not put a silent shutter on because sometimes it unnerves clients. They like to know when they can smile and then when they can stop. So another thing that I absolutely adore about this camera, which I do think is a feature on other DSLRs, is the one and two option on the mode dials. And these are basically just memory recalls of settings. So I have set this camera up to work perfectly within photography and moving image. It gets used for both, probably about 50-50 split. So my manual mode is completely set for photography settings and that's everything from my white balance settings to my focus modes to my expanded focus setting to how I like to how I like to shoot with my workflow. However, one and two is set up exclusively for filming. So I will have the right uh, setting. So I have one which is 1080 filming in slow-mo. I think it's 120 frames per second. And the camera settings will also reflect the frame rate. And then I've got the second setting set up for 4K at 25 frames per second. And they also both set up for the picture profiles. So it, for me, it's super easy switching between photography and film. It's just a case of one, two or three. So I love that feature. And obviously this camera shoots in 4K, which is super duper handy. My Nikon D750 didn't, it was only up to 1080. So in that way, I have got a bit of an upgrade. My only con of this camera is in order to move the focusing point around, I do not like the joystick, which is basically this little knobby here. And you basically you move it around either way to move the focus point around. And I came from the Nikon D750 where you moved this to go around. Whereas going up to here, I didn't find it an easy switch. Even now, I still moan about it fairly often. And if I had the money to, I would actually upgrade to the A7R Mark IV because they have changed that little knob to something a lot more intuitive. So if I had the option, that is what I'd do. So that is a very quick rundown of the A7 Mark III for equine photography. I also should note that I do have a battery grip on this because the A7 Mark III is actually quite the depth of it isn't very long if you sit see where my fingers naturally sit this pinky will sit in this groove onto the battery grip um, and if you're getting this camera i would recommend that you have the battery grip particularly if you're using longer lenses on it because it gives you a lot more stability within your shooting and i shoot so much in portrait mode and i love having this option so that i can shoot like this rather than having to shoot like that um, well worth the investment. Obviously you can fit two batteries in it. I would really recommend that you get the battery grip. So my two little lenses I have here are the 28-70 f 3.5 to 5.6 variable aperture kit lens. Um, there's not a huge amount to say on this other than I like it. It's nice. It isn't something I would shoot on to give professionally to clients, but it does the job. I take it with me for little holiday snaps and I leave it generally leave it on the camera. Um, and the last lens I have is a 28mm f2 fixed, fixed, what is this? It's a fixed, fixed focal length, that's what it is, obviously, 28mm fixed focal length. And this camera, this lens is exclusively used on the gimbal. So I use a DJI Ronin SC and 
this is the it's the gimbal exclusively created for mirrorless cameras because they're so light so i pop this on here take the battery grip off and that is quite a lovely combo so that is all my lenses i don't use either of these for equine photography generally i might use this if i'm doing like a wide shot but very very rarely maybe i've only maybe used it three or four times so let's move on to accessories and the last bits that are in my bag for any mirrorless camera you will need one of these this is a rocket blower and it's basically because when you take the body cap off here you that is the that is the image sensor the camera sensor and the amount of dust that will get on that you have to blow it every single time you take the body cap off or you change a lens so do not buy this camera or a mirrorless camera without having one of these they will save your life i promise you i had to have a sensor clean within maybe four or five weeks of owning this once i got this i haven't had to have one since because i've managed to keep it clean which is good so this thing here is basically just the waterproof camera cover for the bag again i very rarely ever have to use it it'd only be long shoot days that i'd even take it if it's if i'm going to an equine shoot and it's just a standard portrait shoot i'll leave this at home especially because i don't tend to shoot in the rain uh, that is a lens debris for that in here this is a very rare addition i only have this in here because i was filming um yesterday but this is a zoom it can be quite handy to have equine photography because you can make little notes to yourself it's a little bit like a dictaphone it's a recorder so you can sort of come out of the shoot and say that was really lovely these are the key details i need to remember um this is a h1n you can get them quite cheap on amazon so i have a rather lovely jack wheels camera strap which i only very rarely use because if i use this on a 70 to 200 attached to this with it slung over my shoulder i'm very much at risk of bending the bracket from where these two would meet and i don't really fancy doing that which is why i tend to use the holster which attaches to the lens mount on the bottom here and also this would just give me ridiculous backache so i tend to only take this out on days where i'm taking it like as a snappy camera if that makes sense pop this lens on it pop that on it and keep it over my shoulder so the last thing the last two things i keep i now keep a fabric mask in my bag because of the pandemic um if any clients want me to wear a mask i will um i don't tend to on the outdoors because obviously we're outdoors i'm never within too near of clients but i keep one anyway the last thing i keep is a very hard and durable memory card case that's actually something that is worth noting about the sony a7 mark iii is that it has a dual card slot uh, ridiculously and so annoyingly card one is the bottom card not the top one and the right speed of slot one is up to 300 megabytes per second whereas the second card is only up to 170 megabytes so i have a 32 gigabyte 300 megabytes per speed megabytes per second speed card in there because that was expensive that was about 80 quid and then i have a slower speed card a 64 gig one that lives in slot two because that's all it can write to so rather than splash out on two really quick ones you just need one and then i always keep a spare card in the camera bag and just in case for any reason this gets left behind and then in here i keep a lexr 32 gig 150 megabytes per second card and then a sandisk 32 gig 80 megabytes per second and there really shouldn't i don't think there will ever be a day where i get through a 64 gig and then four 32 gig cards i highly doubt it so that is my kit bag um there was a couple of questions that came in one of them was to show my camera bag which i've done another one was to give like a little review of the sony which i've done and the last one was to talk about what snacks i have from kirsty so snacks i will take a variety depending on how i feel if it is a full shoot day i will take an entire lunch but my favorite snacks to have would be a nectarine a peach a tangerine 
or Oat Valley do like these crunchy oat bars, which I really like. I'll probably go for a cereal bar over anything else rather than crisps or a sandwich or anything. I would probably just go for something with a little bit of sugar in it. So there we have it. That is an entire kit bag tour. I hope you have really enjoyed watching this and seeing the behind the scenes of what goes on. Um, if you have any recommendations for Kit or things that you think, oh my God, she needs that in her life, give me a shout. If not, I will leave everything linked in the description below for you to have a little look-sees at. Until then, so I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Obviously, please subscribe and leave me a comment. I would love to know if you have any more questions or if you have any video requests. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.